Hello, my name is Agathis from Diamond Online, and I am preparing to play Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition because there just aren't enough playthroughs of Baldur's Gate on YouTube yet. Baldur's Gate is a classic game, one I've played many times before, and I've been wanting to do this playthrough for quite a while. With Baldur's Gate 3 being announced last month, that was July 2019, I thought I have got to get this playthrough in before it's too late. So we're going to start off, we're going to create a character in this video and then next video is going to be the first episode. I am playing this game with the Enhanced Edition, although I did play it for many years with the Originals Editions. Um, this is actually my first playthrough of Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Um, I'd always played with the other ones before, but I decided I wanted to try out the Enhanced Edition, and it now has the Siege of Dragonspear expansion, which, been, which has been out for a couple of years. The Enhanced Edition has had a few bugs, but it's been out now for a number of years, and all of those have been patched, and for the most part, the, the gameplay of the Enhanced Edition is far superior to the original. So I'm told. Having said that, I am playing with a couple of mods. The original edition had hundreds, if not thousands of mods, um, and many of them have been ported over to the Enhanced Edition. Um, but for this one, I'm playing with just a handful that I feel are really um, useful and important to the gameplay and will enhance the experience for you as, as the YouTube viewer or the Twitch viewer if you're on Twitch um, and just give you a little bit more flavour for the game. The first mod that I'm playing with is called Mod Merge. That's just a, a mod manager program that makes everything else work. And there are links to this and to the others uh, down in the doobly-doo below. The second mod that I'm playing with is called the NPC Project Pack. Uh, this was a pack that was developed just to give the Baldur's Gate 1 NPCs just a little bit more pop. And when they made Baldur's Gate 2, they, made, they introduced more ways for the NPCs to interact with the central character. But that hadn't been done in Baldur's Gate 1. And the community spent a lot of time to try to give the Baldur's Gate 1 NPCs that extra uh, role-playing ability uh, that Baldur's Gate 2 did. And I think it's a really well done mod. Coupled with that, there is a mod called Unfinished Business, which I'm also using. That basically wraps up a few of the loose ends from some of the quests and dialogues in Baldur's Gate 1. There are a few quests that um, you start and, well, not, well, not quests, but bits of lore and background pieces which you hear about and that you're told about during the course of the game, which have no real consequences. Uh, many of these are from cut quests and cut content, and the Unfinished Business mod um, puts some of those back in and just ties up some of those loose ends. The Enhanced Edition actually does most of this itself. Uh, that was one of the features of the Enhanced Edition, that they would tie up some of these uh, old bits of storyline but there are still a few remaining and this, bot, this mod covers all of those. I'm also using um, a mod called Sword Coast Stratagems. This is an AI mod. This makes the gameplay much more challenging. Um, it introduces basically better AI for the enemies. And I'm not going to say too much more about that other than it will make it better for you as a viewer because the combat is going to be more interesting than if I was doing this with the original AI, which is very, very basic indeed. Uh, coupled with that is the Tweaks Anthology, which is more a set of um, ease of use features. Uh, one example of this is that in the original game, uh, ammunition, stacks of arrows and crossbow bolts and so forth, only stacked up to 20. So you could have 20 arrows in one stack. And because you had fairly limited inventory, you couldn't carry very many arrows. Now arrows cost nothing. I think it's one gold coin for 20 arrows. 
it's nothing. But this makes it so each stack can hold 120. And that's better because I don't have to spend my time in the game running back to town, getting more arrows, selling stuff off. I can just keep going for a longer period on camera and give you more of the action rather than the um, utility side of the game where you've got to do that sort of selling your loot kind of stuff. I've also removed the experience cap in this game. Uh, that's because quite often in Baldur's Gate um, you'll get to a point where you're not getting any more experience for all the stuff that you're doing. You hit the XP cap. And I fully intend to take these characters into Baldur's Gate 2 in my next set of playthroughs. So I don't want that experience to be lost and it's also, at that point, quite tempting just to skip the quests, because you're not getting any material rewards for them. Or at least experience rewards. You're getting some material rewards, but often um, you, know, you might be getting very little gold compared to where you are in the game. So I've removed the XP cap because I want that XP. We're going to take it over to Baldur's Gate 2. Finally, um, I've made a couple of changes to some of the NPCs using the NPC uh, pack the level one NPCs. I will talk about those as we come to them. I think I've only done two. Um, or is it just one? I actually just one. Just one NPC I made a minor change to. And we'll come to that when we do. Aside from that, I'm hitting this game blind. I've never played the Enhanced Edition before. Let's see what happens. Now, let's start off and create a character. So, uh, we're in Baldur's Gate in House Edition, we're going to do single player, and we're going to do new game. So, gender. I will play a male character for this particular playthrough. Um, we, need, uh, we need a good portrait for this. I'm probably not wearing a great costume. None of this particular costume doesn't really fit in with many of these characters. And that one would do. He's got a big shiny helmet and red scarf and shield. Um, that's, these are all actual characters in the game. Um, hmm. I probably should have downloaded a... Um, a portrait pack. Some of those can be pretty good. But for now, we'll choose this one. Uh, at least he's got some chainmail. That's pretty good. Um, he's got plate armor on, but um, ah, never mind. This will do. Let's choose a race. I'm going to be human. And I'm going to be a fighter. Let's keep this basic, basic for now. Um, and I'm not going to take a class kit, I don't think. Tempting though it is. Um, tempting though it is to go Kenzai, I think I'll just stay as a basic fighter. And, hmm. When you play through the game, you're basically supposed to be lawful good. That's just how you're supposed to be. I think I might go neutral good, to be honest. Because um, I won't always be following the law. Um, you know, what's interesting is that... Um, good versus evil... Good versus evil is an interesting discussion to have. Um, and really, a lot of it. There are many, many videos on this and Dungeons and Dragons and other role playing games on YouTube. But one sort of general theory which I follow is that doing good things is about um, helping other people and helping the group or the community or the wider world. And that being evil is um, doing things for yourself. Um. So, you can be, um, if, um, if killing, if killing is innocent peasants is something that you enjoy, that would be evil. 
Um, but just because you're evil doesn't mean that's what turns you on. You know, you could just want to be rich. You just don't care about anybody else. You want to be rich. You want to have loads of stuff and you don't care how you get it. Killing peasants does not add to that goal, so why am I going to spend my time killing peasants? No, I'm going to spend my time finding ways to earn money, cheat people out of their money, steal money, and otherwise get money from other people without caring how I got it. But killing peasants, they've got nothing, they've got no money, why do I care about them? Um, so, you know, it depends on, on how you look at this, and I think most people in the world are of a, a neutral, to, are of, of generally neutral uh, to good um, stance, if you will. We all have to look after our own interests sometimes, we've all got careers, uh, we've all got, you know, families that we care about, and you can care about your family, but nobody else's family. That could be evil, but... Um, we're going to go neutral good because we're not always going to be following the law uh, per se. We're gonna, just going to be trying to survive and look after our friends. And we're going to stick with that. Now comes the fun part. Rolling our abilities. Now, in Baldur's Gate, you get to roll your abilities by clicking this button. And the computer basically is rolling, I guess it's 3d6. For each one of these stats and you want to get as high stats as possible um, in Baldur's Gate coming up with the right stats is difficult and I will explain why um, when you play Baldur's Gate the story is about the your your central character, the character that we're creating now. Now sure, there are other characters involved, but the story is still about your central character. And often a lot of the dialogue options are directed at that character. You can put another character in the front slot um, for talking to merchants and things, which might, uh, if they're very charismatic, well-liked people, they might get you a discount in shops. For the most part, the, the quest is about your central character. Um, often referred to as car name or char name in some of the text or on forums and things like that. Char name being the, the string that uh, appears in the game's code. So if your name is Brian, um, the computer will, every time it sees char name, will put in Brian. Um, so your character has to be the face character of the campaign, really. Even if you don't really want to be the face character, you are the face character because the story is about your character. And there's no way you can get around that. The story is not about the other NPCs, although they do have their moments and they have some side quests and things like that. So it's very reliant on, you know, you being the, the leader. So you need a high charisma. Um, now not all role-playing games use charisma. Dungeons & Dragons does, but there are plenty like um, uh, what's the, you know tyranny and um, um, the, what was it destiny um, and you know a good handful of others um, that use your uh, even F and Fallout does use this but not as much as you might think a lot of the times. Um, your reaction when you talk to other people in the game um, is what you choose as a player. You'll be given four or five dialogue options and you'll choose the one uh, that you like the most. Skyrim is a good example of this. Skyrim doesn't have um, charisma, nor, nor do any of the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, there is a skill called diplomacy or speech um, and there's in some games, there's a sort of a mini game that you can play to make your speech better and to enhance how 
NPCs react to you, but you need um, to make those dialogue choices. Your character also has to have its his or her primary attributes, and if we have a look at this, I've got a rule of a 92, which might do us, to be honest. Um, the primary attributes for a fighter is strength. Now, fighters normally want a strength of 18. I don't mind doing with 17, it's okay. Um, I do want a high intelligence. Um, and the others, really... Uh, I want I want a charisma of 18. Ooh, okay, 93. Yes, let's see what we can do with 93. Um, Twelve at least. I need eighteen charisma. I need eighteen strength. Eighteen seventy six is okay. Um, actually, this this is more than I need. I'd have been quite happy with ninety, to be honest. Um, but fifteen will be fine there. Yeah. Sure, that'll do. Uh, 18, 15, 12, 18, 12... Sorry. 18, 15, 12, 18, 12, 18. That's not bad. Uh, yes, I will save that. Let's move on. Um, skills. We get to choose our... Um, our weapons. Now, um, I would quite like to go with the halberd and the longbow. There we go. Those are going to be our two primary weapons for this character. Halberd and longbow. Um, and we'll put more um, point into two-handed weapon style as we go, I think. Yeah. And we could go sword and shield. Sword and shield could be interesting. Um. Extra AC against missile weapons. No, I think I'll stick with sword and, with two-handed weapon style. To be honest, that's fine. Appearance. Uh, well, there's our sort of warrior appearance. I'll choose. It, the computer's chosen some brown colours for us, which are fine. I think I'll make one of them blue, just so we know who we are. Uh, maybe I need to see if I can get myself a blue, um, blue hood at some point, or maybe a different one. We'll see. And we need a a sound set. Let's see. We've got the default one. Onward! I feel this is my rightful place. Impatient. Death to you all. No. Your Ernest? life ends here. No. Streetwise. <laughs> Time for a bit of the rough and tumble. That's not me. You got this coming. Sounds like Robin Williams. That one. If nobody else is gonna step up. Why not? Let's give them a right thrashing. No, I don't think so. Get over here. Right then, I'm in charge. Wanding? Feel my power. Do as I say and I'll see you through the trials that await. Bit different. Rest when we can, fight when we must. Jovial? For justice. Follow me and we will surely be victorious. Being a hero is hard work. Can we move on? I am wounded, but look at how I fight on! Feel my power. Do as I say. Rest when we... This is excruciatingly dull. I will not fall here. Yes? Again? Ah. With caution. That'll do. Yeah, commanding. Let's go with commanding. 
And we need a name, and our name is Zagathis. There we go. Let's accept. And we need to choose a level. Um, I think we'll go hardcore. Um, hardcore seems about right. Uh, Legacy of Baal for or Bail Baal. Um, Legacy of Baal is a new thing that was introduced in Siege of Dragonspear. And it is essentially. Um, what you would call it. It's like. If this was Diablo or something like this, this would be like nightmare difficulty. So you cannot win this unless you are level 20 plus, probably. Uh, at the beginning of the game, there's a bit where you fight rats because there's always bits where you fight rats in role-playing games. That's just how fantasy RPGs are done. Your first battle almost always is going to be some rats. Rats have one hit point in the normal game. Um, in Legacy of Baal, they have 93 hit points. Right? So it's not like, oh, you, you just need to be really good. No, you can't kill those rats at level one. They will murder you. You have to be a high level to have the damage output and to be able to resist their attacks. Um... Uh, their, their, their chances to hit are much, much higher as well, of course. I'm just talking about their hit points. So we're going to do a hardcore, and I'm going to leave this episode here. And when we come back, I'm going to click this button, and we're going to go straight into... Um, we're going to go straight into the intro, and get started. So, thanks very much for joining me in this video. Let me know down in the comments if you have any tips for me on this playthrough. Um, like I said, I don't know any about any of the extra content from the Enhanced Edition, so tips would be appreciated for that. Otherwise, please consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more and check out some of my other videos. My name is Agathis, I'm going offline, and you'll see me for the first episode of Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition next time. <laughs>